Dr. Saul Fenster sat in this very chair some 30 years ago, something of that nature, had come out to California and said he wanted to establish a, a college there that would upgrade the university. And he said that my vision of the college is to make it a place where overlooked young people can go. Well, that struck a, a real note for me. And so I said, yes, uh, and so I'll, I'll fund a college. And uh, that's how the Honors College started, right in this very room, uh, sitting in this chair, and Dr. Fenster is responsible for that. The students who come here, they are diverse. They are often first in their family to go to a college. So they work very hard. They're very high achieving. And we truly have some very gifted young men and women here. An Honors College student is different from other students because of their commitment to developing a very strong technical background, but also developing those horizontal and breadth skills that will enable them to be successful. Since the college is devoted to the top 2% of our country intellectually, they've got to lead. And the students are leading in their productivity, in the patents, in the innovation, in the invention that these undergraduates have already achieved while they're attending here. The Honors College and even NJT as a whole is a very diverse group. Within just the few friends that I have, we always refer to ourselves as the mini UN. And it's not just diversity of gender or nationality, it's diversity of outlooks too. And therefore it's important to learn other disciplines and respect them. There's got to be room to understand other people's viewpoints. See, those are important things in this kind of country if we're going to build a, the kind of country we want. One of the great things about the Aldo Menares College is bringing together all these academic disciplines. You really begin to sense a different culture. I know I've met people far outside the spectrum of what I would consider relevant to my academic experience, but I've learned things from them that I never like would have expected. I think interdisciplinary is the only answer for the future. I think the other advantage and what's unique to us is we are at NJIT, a very strong school uh, providing quality education at a reasonable cost to students who will be highly successful. I'm the oldest of uh, four, so it was always the situation that I needed to go to a university that would give me scholarships based on my merit. People assume that hardworking, high achieving, sometimes gifted and talented people don't need help. Well, they do. And that's why the Honors College is so important. Al always, always raised the expectation. We have a picture of him in a running tracksuit and with a torch. And that was, if I recall correctly, that was the 1984 Olympics. He was one of those people honored by what he had already achieved. We have events here in mentoring, passing the torch. Again, about mentoring, about giving back. One of my awards says for a lifetime of contribution to the construction industry and to the community. And it's that to the community that's so important. It's really nice to be able to share that knowledge that you learned with someone, because then it makes their journey that much easier. So Al comes to campus at least once a year and sometimes twice a year. And he invariably positions himself after we have a colloquium. Al stands at the door and wants to shake the hand of every one of the couple hundred students who attend this colloquium. So they know who he is. All of the students want to hear what Albert Dorman's done and hear about his adventures and his contributions. But Albert Dorman always says he can't wait for the time when he opens up the newspaper and gets to read about what NJIT students are doing. It's very rare that you come across somebody that can inspire you so much. And I'd say definitely Albert and his wife are very inspiring people. He or she should leave footprints. To leave footprints and have the world a better place for your having been there.